Q. And we are joined by Chuck Todd, the chief White House correspondent for NBC News. Um, you know, again, Chuck, congratulations on getting the interview that everybody wanted and that everybody's talking about. Well, you're kind to say that. It, uh, a little luck, a little timing, you never know. Well, it's all good. Um, so, Chuck, I was wondering, you know, in, in your estimation, is there a crisis of confidence in President Obama's leadership? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it was interesting. Uh, I look at our last NBC Wall Street Journal poll. I know there are others out, and I look at ours last week, and he hit a, a record low. I mean, I think it's clear he's got an issue. I've talked to some of his closest uh, outside advisors who think that, that he has a, a confidence issue right now with the public. And it, in particular, it was this. You know this this promise this you know if you if you can, uh, if you like your health care plan you can keep it and this is this you know the website was one thing this was a this got to the core you know this gets to the core of a personal you know of a personal connection the public has with their president sure and so I think I think he I think he does have one I think the White House does believe here's what I think they believe I think they believe they have a confidence issue among the elite media and among elite columnists and among some supporters and certainly leaders inside the Democratic Party. I don't I think they don't think they have as much of a problem with the public as maybe we in the so called media elite think. Um, but I think that they do believe they do know that they have issues to deal with. Well, you know, Chuck, that's interesting because for the past hour, I have been taking calls from Americans, and I mean, the calls are charged with emotion. There is every variety of, of bad luck story you can almost imagine. And uh, and that's why I was wondering. And, you know, I, I wonder if the president wouldn't benefit if he doesn't think that people sort of outside the bubble, as, as he likes to call it, are, uh, are, are concerned with this. You know, he ought to listen. And more than that, I wonder what your thoughts are. Um, if the president is perceived as having a crisis of confidence, do you think it would help in elevating his credibility if he was willing to come on with, say, a Bill Bennett, a Michael Medved, a Hugh Hewitt, a Mike Gallagher, someone who is is obviously not That's someone more adversarial? Yes, yeah, someone who yeah. is is you know where he's going to be challenged. One of his sharper critics. You know, it's interesting. Um, I remember during the I think he he tried to do that. I want to say in that first during the whole stimulus thing. Um, I can't remember who it is he went on with. It was somebody, but it wasn't necessarily somebody, a very conservative radio host. I felt like it was more of a center-right one, where they were looking for that. And he obviously has done some meetings with, off the record with a, a few conservative columnists, uh, Charles Crothammer uh, being um, the most notable of, of who he met with. But that was during the shutdown when he felt that he was sort of on high ground. Obviously, now he's on, on lower ground when it comes to this. You know, it's funny. I actually think he would benefit from just simply doing some town halls uh, and not White House screen town halls with supporters, but doing, you know, going back, essentially letting some folks vent, letting yeah. some folks vent, handling the vent a little bit. Now, I think he probably they probably wouldn't want to do this until they actually had a working website. You know, I think they think part of their problem is this issue of people losing uh, people giving these cancellation notices. They thought, well, okay, they're going to get these notices, but wait till they see that they can get an equal or better deal uh, in the exchanges. Well, guess what? Nobody, nobody can get on the website. Nobody can make it work uh, very well. And so they realize that that's sort of the pickle that they're in. If they, assuming they get this website up and running at the end of the month, um, I do think he would benefit from some sort of you know, forum where people can vent. Uh, and he hears more of these stories in a personal way. I think they have worked too hard to only hear about the the stories of you know. There's definitely, I think, a lot of uh, sicker people or people that use the healthcare system a lot that love this new plan. But then there are the folks that are not necessarily big users of the healthcare system who feel like they're they're taking it on the chin a little bit because their premiums are technically going up. Well, you know, Chuck, and what I was wondering is, you know, in a in a town hall, um, OK, first of all, there's the whole idea that he's got to overcome public cynicism about whether the questioners have been pre-screened and pre-selected. Sure. Right. I mean, but, that's you always know, there. The, right. the other thing is, it seems, you know, isn't there something of a, an inherent 
bigger power imbalance between just a person who has no real media experience sort of going toe to toe with the president of the United States? I mean, wouldn't he gain more in terms of credibility if it were he were seen to be willing to come on and address the objections of a knowledgeable, uh, reasonable, but highly articulate critic who has some public support in his own right, or at least some public following in his own right, don't you think that would do anything for him? I think it could. I mean, you know, remember when Bill Clinton and Newt Gingrich did that joint town hall back in 96 and 97 in New Hampshire. Uh, it was a big, uh, uh, it was a, it was a good moment, frankly, for both of them at the time. It ended up helping Clinton more than helping Newt. Um, but it was sort of, you know, that's another way you could do this. I was thinking about your, and it's a, it's a totally fair critique that, you know, the average citizen might feel a little bit intimidated by the moment. Well, maybe you should do this do this tour with some Republican elected officials who are critics. Yeah, take do Paul a Ryan. town hall with them. You know, do it something like that. Maybe, you know, he and Bobby Jindal or he and Rick Perry or something. Yeah. You know, who did the, the couple of the governors that have been, that don't want to take the Medicaid, uh, Medicaid money. Um, but, you know, that's not, that's not, it's never been, one of his comfort zones. No. Now, Bill Clinton sort of enjoys the political the give and take. theater. Yeah. And I mean that, I don't mean that in a negative. I, look, political theater is very important to policy debates. No, I, I it's understand. It's very important. And, and I think that, you know, Bill Clinton wasn't afraid of those moments. It's not that the President Obama, it's just not, well, I mean, you know, if you went to law school with him, you know, I mean, that, yep. that's not what he, that's not his. Comfort, comfort zone. zone. He'd, he'd rather be in a lecture hall. Now, you know, Chuck, just uh, closing out, we've got about 40 seconds left. I mean, were you surprised that the president didn't just flat out apologize like Lanny Davis and a bunch of others have suggested he should instead of sort of giving a lawyerly kind of apology, a carefully, you could see it was carefully worded. Were you surprised? Um, I, you know, look, I, I'll, I'll, I thought it was going to happen right off the top. So I was I was surprised that it, it, it didn't come until the second or I think it was my second question, my, the first follow up. Um, but you know I you know who knows how he thought about of how it how it should come out how it should look. So uh, but I will admit and I thought it was gonna I, I thought it was gonna come right off the top. Yeah, uh, it, it, but it, it didn't. So you know it you know you know I, I it, it would have been shame on me if I didn't ask for one. <laughs> well, you did, and uh, and that was great. Um, so finally, um, just briefly, you know, the president has mentioned that he feels badly and he's working to fix these problems. What, what, in your view, is it that he can actually do? I mean, is there a legal authority that's actually going to allow him to do anything meaningful? We got about 20 Well, I don't know. They're trying to see if they can do it without Congress. They don't want to go, go through Congress. Yeah, but what kind of regulations can you do at this point? So, well, it has to do with, honestly, they don't know yet. They're negotiating with the. I had I just did a bunch of reporting for this tonight. They're negotiating with the state. You know, you basically have three entities you have to deal with here: the state insurance commissioners for the state by state issues, the insurance companies plus plus the federal their own federal regulation. I think what they're trying to come up with is can they basically uh, do regulations that would allow? Let's say you got a cancellation notice, you can't have the policy you like, but maybe they can uh, get the insurance companies and the regulators to agree. Well, you know what? If you want to keep that policy, you can, uh, you can renew it through 2014. Okay, Chuck Todd from NBC News. We'll be right back on The Hugh Hewitt Show.